Bird Note presents. This is Bring Birds Back. I'm Tanaja Hamilton. We've all heard the saying before, birds of a feather flock together. And that's cute and all, but while I might be a little flighty, I sure don't have feathers. So what's a girl gotta do to find her flock? You know what I mean, right? Like, how do I find my community, my people? I'm thinking of a cool group of ragtag individuals with a slightly off-kilter sense of humor who go nerdy for night jars. I mean, where's the bird group for disenchanted millennials who just want to wake up early and eat our avocado toast in defiance because we'll probably never own a house, but we still want to be Purple Martin landlords? Okay, maybe those are a bit specific. Seriously, though, hit me up if that sounds like your thing. But the question remains, how do I find people with similar interests to mine to go birding with? Well, for this episode, I'm looking at how one organization is helping more people find their flock. I'm so excited to chat with leaders from the Feminist Bird Club, also known as the FBC. It's an awesome organization that champions inclusivity and intersectionality in the bird world by intentionally creating a safe space for people, especially for marginalized communities. With chapters literally all around the country and also a couple abroad, the Feminist Bird Club has a wide wingspan. When I talk to people about birding, especially to my friends who are BIPOC, women, queer, gender diverse, a mix of all of the above, A lot of concerns about safety and about respect for their many identities and, frankly, about sharing space with folks who have historically held the gate to keep them out. So, without further ado, I'm excited to introduce my guests, Gina Fusello and Kasia Chmielinski from the Feminist Bird Club. Thank you both so much for being here. Can you tell our listeners who you are and what y'all's role is for the FBC? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Kasia Shemalinski. I'm the co-founder of the Jersey City chapter of the Feminist Bird Club. And I'm uh, Gina Fusello. I am on the board of Feminist Bird Club and one of the event leaders for the New York City chapter. Awesome. Thank y'all both so much for being here. I'm curious, of course, just to start out about how you both got into birding. I have always really been interested in birds. I thought they were really cool. And I would post pictures of them on Facebook a lot back in the day. And I would just be like, look at this guy. And then I posted, um, I think I posted a picture of a cedar waxwing. And I was like, this bird is ridiculous. It has the audacity to have painted nails, even though it doesn't have hands. Like, what is this bird? And someone commented and was like, oh, we see those in Central Park. And I was like, what? (laughs) Like, you can see these, like, around here? What? And so I, like, was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And so Gina bought a cheap pair of binoculars and signed up for some bird outings. But she didn't quite feel like she found her people until she signed up for her first feminist bird club outing. The person leading it was Kelly Quinones, and she was so enthusiastic about it that I was like, oh, I get it. It makes me want to come out again to like see what I have tomorrow. How about you, Kasha? I had moved from the West Coast to the East Coast and I was traveling a ton, working a lot. And a friend of mine that I very much respect, who's just as nerdy as I am, was like, you might enjoy bird watching. And I was like, I don't know. That sounds like old white people. No offense to any old white people who are listening to this. And she said, no, you really might. And so I like literally went outside and looked at some birds and I was like, I don't know. Nah. But when Kaja borrowed their dad's binoculars, things started to click. I work on computers all day. It got me outside and it got me looking at things. And I felt very quickly the kind of rush that I had felt only from Pokemon Go. <laughs> um, yeah. They're like real life Pokemon. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I had kind of liked Pokemon Go, but there were some, like, close calls on a bicycle. So I was like, all right, no more Pokemon Go for Kasha. But same idea, same joy, more joy, because they're real. And then, for the next few years, Kasha birded alone, because like so many people, they just didn't quite know where to even find other birders. But then they ran across a piece online that really turned the tides. I think there was a New York Times article or something about Feminist Bird Club. And I was like, oh, I'm in the New York area now. So I joined one of the walks and I was like, oh, you could do this with other people. 
can y'all tell me a little bit more about Feminist Birth Club? What is it and why does it exist? What's the mission? So the main mission of the club is to pair the fervor for bird watching with social justice. So we try to create a space where people can feel comfortable going birding with us because it's not always the most comfortable being alone in nature. So Mm -hmm. it's very good to offer a space where people can come and one, not feel foolish for not knowing anything if they're brand new and two, feel like they're protected by like the numbers that we have. And it's always my hope that people are meeting at our events and finding new friends and meshing with people because that's what happened to me. I think that that is one of the best things about the club is like finding your people. With the formula like that, there's no surprise that Feminist Bird Club is growing rapidly. FBC is national with new chapters in places like D.C., Tucson, and Houston. There's some chapters abroad too, like in the U.K. and the Netherlands. Well, we have a lot of enthusiasm, so enthusiasm will take you very far. And it turns out there are feminists and bird watchers everywhere. Kaja lives in Jersey City, right across the Hudson River from Manhattan and Central Park. And they started to get to know the environment in Jersey City, too. I'm learning so much every day about the way that we need to approach nature in urban areas. And I think Jersey has had some really toxic uh, historical situations and scenarios. The Hackensack River, which is on the other side, so you have the Hudson on one side and the Hackensack on the other, is one of the most polluted rivers in America. And it's the cleanest it's been in 100 years now. So there's all these groups that are really local that are focusing on kind of the intersection of the environment and community. But they do tend towards being older, whiter, mailer. So we decided to start a chapter. It's not just me, it's myself and my co-leads, Harriet Bailey and Gabriela Figueredo. And we decided to just like post something on Instagram. And the interest has just been kind of amazing. I wouldn't say that like any of the three of us are bird experts. And I think that's part of the joy too in creating something like this is that you can start to interrogate and move away from some of these hierarchical structures that are also patriarchal. So this notion of you go on a walk and there's one person who has all the information who's teaching everybody else, that in and of itself is a patriarchal system. And so when you go on a walk and you're saying, hey, look, I am really excited to bring everybody together to explore this park. Yo, that's like very exciting, but also being able to say, I actually don't know the answers to everything. I'm not gonna be able to tell you all the birds and what they eat and where they're coming from and where they're going, but we all have books and why don't we all learn it together? And I think that also is a kind of a paradigm shift that I'm super excited to be a part of. I love so much of what you just said. And that last point that you hit on about it being a paradigm shift is so important, right? It's so necessary to continue to kind of evaluate these structures that we're in and thinking critically about it. And, you know, as somebody who is also not a bird expert, it's really fun. And I think welcoming to others to be like, look, this is what I know. You can fill up so many more books with the things I don't know. Like, let's learn together. It's a good model. Like all goals. What even are goals? They are all just (laughs) one bird to me. I'm sorry to say this. I'm just going to come out and say this. But like, I need help with goals, right? So someone bought a goal book and we were standing there frigid like a few weeks ago, just looking at this book being like, oh, I don't know, which one do you think it is? You know, and and there's so much joy in that too. And when you finally have done the identification, you get a picture, you send it to somebody on a WhatsApp group and then you get a confirmation later. Like, actually, yeah, you're looking at the right markings. You're looking at the right things. Um, That feels amazing, right? That's like um, being in school again, but like the good parts. Yeah. I don't want anybody on any of our events to feel like they can't ask questions or that it's it's like, oh, it's a stupid question, but what is this? And I'll be like, that's a cardinal. It's a cool bird. There was actually a woman in Central Park who stopped us and was like, what is this bird? I took a picture of it on my phone and it was a cardinal. And she was like, I'm from Brazil. Like, I don't know anything about this. So you can't assume anything about anybody's knowledge base. The last thing I want to hear is that somebody didn't feel like they were included or someone didn't feel like they were being heard or anything like that. Can I I say something about that? Because I, I feel like it's so important, that notion of a sense of belonging. 
And, you know, my background is I studied science and as an undergraduate who at the time was female identified, now identify as non-binary, but I was in a program that wasn't particularly supportive at the time. The university president at the time was saying that women maybe biologically were not as good at doing science as other people. And so I left the sciences and I, I always kind of am interested in the studies that have come out since just showing that it's not actually about having expertise that encourages you or makes you feel like you should stay in something. It's actually about feeling like you belong. I think I was no less or more intelligent when it came to science, but because I didn't feel like I belonged, I left. And I think that's always stuck with me. And I think it translates across sciences or nature or when you're in a workplace or, you know, if you're a musician or whatever it is, right? Any kind of club or interest, if you don't feel like you belong, then you'll leave that thing. And I think you can say the converse too, which is if you don't see a group where you think you're going to belong, you won't join, right? And so I think it's, it's really, really important to, to kind of double down on that, that absolutely birding can be a competitive sport. It is expertise based for a lot of people that you do grow in your expertise as you learn things, but without the sense of belonging, right? It's not worth it. And I think a lot of people who don't see themselves in those communities won't stay. We're gonna take a quick break. But when we get back, we'll dive a little deeper into who the Feminist Bird Club is for, how they're disrupting the typical, usual model for birding trips, and what kind of shenanigans you can look forward to on an FBC trip. Stick around. This is Bring Birds Back. I'm talking to two leaders from the Feminist Bird Club, and Gina and Kaja want to be really clear about what the word feminist means to their organization. You know, the concern is that a lot of people see the word feminist and they immediately think white feminism, which is not what we're about at all. We try to be an inclusive space for not just women, but also LGBTQ people and BIPOC people. It's for anybody who feels like they would feel uncomfortable going out by themselves. It seems like, and what I'm hearing, and definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like anybody who wants kind of entry into this space, you have to be kind of willing to interrogate all of those things and where you stand in relation to these communities. So if you're somebody who has, who comes from a background that has traditionally had power, maybe that's a man, maybe that is a white person. Like you have to be willing to interrogate what does my showing up in this space mean? How am I interacting? Am I amenable to, you know, not being centered in this situation, which seems important and it's pretty radical in this space. I think Gina said it really well. I think it's for folks who, don't necessarily feel comfortable in other birding groups outside in nature, maybe around sciences or natural exploration in this way. But I want to come back to this idea of the word feminist being a signal. It's like the bat signal, but it's like the bird signal. I think in a way, the word feminist allows you to have those conversations. It's in the name, right? So if you've done something that is going to be in violation of that as a belief system or as an ideal then you can fall back on that word in that title and say, hey, this is not okay for these reasons. And we were really upfront about it to begin with. We've also gone super local and tried to build relationships with community organizations that have been here for a lot longer than we have and know the community a lot better and you know, can help us understand what the needs are so we're kind of invested in getting to know people in each of the parks who are planting native plants or the city journalers or, um, you know, there's a group called Jersey City Birders and they've been birding in certain areas. And we recently were approached by the local 4-H of Hudson County who wants to bring kids into natural spaces in the city because there's just such a dearth of programming for kids. And so we're going to do that. And it's like, we'll just be a part of these community events and help to collaborate and show up and volunteer. And yeah, we're feminists. Okay. Right. But in a way it just normalizes it. And what I hope is that when we run this summer camp that we're going to be running this summer, we're really excited about that. These kids aren't going to think about feminism. They're just going to think those people were great. And we learned a lot about birds and, oh, now maybe I associate the word feminist with like great people who are friendly where I felt comfortable. So I think there's also that aspect of it, which is that it's a signal, but also I hope it it gets a little bit normalized because there's a bad taste about that word sometimes. And I think it's really unfortunate. 
Uh, and I hope that we can help to mitigate that and actually show the positive sides of this kind of approach. Absolutely. Something that I think a lot of people in the birding community, especially people who are trying to shift these paradigms, who are doing kind of this more radical work, you hear a lot about, like, you should leave identity politics out of things like birding. Like, why why, why are you making this a thing? So what do you or would you say to people who kind of go along that line of thinking? I think that there's, like, this assumption of neutrality, that nature, the natural world, or these hobbies are neutral. And that somehow by talking about the experiences of folks of color or the name of the club or all of the kind of ancillary or even intersectional topics that come up that we're somehow making it not neutral. And I think that the reality is that it's not neutral anyway. So we're just trying to shed light on that and highlight the ways in which we believe that things are neutral. We've been taught that things are neutral, whether it's the names of the birds or the way that we lead our groups or power, the power of naturalists, of of people who are public figures, um, the power of institutions like the Sierra Club or Audubon or any of these, right? We talked about this a couple of episodes ago with regards to bird names, like how birds have been named in honor of people who were outspoken white supremacists. That's not neutral for people of color learning about birds. And similarly, all the unquestioned assumptions of how a birding event is run, those are things that the Feminist Bird Club is trying to disrupt. So if I was to go on a Feminist Bird Club event... What can I look forward to? What kind of events do y'all do? We're just going to have a nice time together. And whatever that brings, it brings. Like, if we see a bird, like a starling taking a bath, we're going to get excited about it because it's real cute when they take little baths. Um, <laughs> so that that's the energy that I try to bring to the ones that I lead in the very least. During the pandemic, we did a lot of online stuff, too. We did a female bird ID one, which was very fun and informative. It's super empowering once you're able to get those and it makes you a better birder. And yeah. we would like to extend the club past any kind of physical borders because there are many disabled people who are taking an interest in birds too. I hope it's really welcoming. I hope that people learn things. So we'll talk about not just, you know, who has historically been on that land, but also what about the companies and the toxic cleanups and the kind of disagreements or fights that have taken place in order to make this place the way it is today so that people are also contextualized. Thank you both so much for your time. This was really great and super informational. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. It was a fun conversation. Yeah, it was so fun. The Feminist Bird Club has chapters all across the U.S. You can find links to all of those, as well as some other cool birding affinity groups at our website, birdnote.org. Bring Birds Back is produced by Mark Bramhill and me, Tanaja Hamilton. Sam Johnson is our production assistant. We're edited by Oluwakemi Aladesui and Allison Berenger of Rough Cut Collective. Our fact checker is Connor Guerin. Our content director is Allison Wilson. Scoring is by Cosmo Sheldrake and Blue Dot Sessions. Special thanks to Vicki Merrick and Rekha Murthy. Yeah.